Welcome back, you doers. This is the second video in which I show you the most basic setup of the Yudo key. If you missed the first one, you'll find the link in the description. I'll show you how to install all the dependencies, libraries, tools, and compilers you need to start programming the SP32 microcontrollers, and once the board is connected, how to program it. In the description, you'll find the official links with the detailed installation steps. Now we'll install all the dependencies in the Linux OS. Okay, so first, here's a list of dependencies you need to install to start programming with ESP. A text editor, today we are using Visual Studio Code, and the main dependencies like Git, WGET, Python C, Python C, PAP, VirtualM, CMake, and others. So let's install them. You can find the complete list of prerequisites in the description. Now let's install the latest version of the ESP IDF environment 4.4.1 on the PC. Download the ESP IDF framework from GitHub. Install the just loaded framework. Make loading of environment variable inside the your terminal easier by defining an alias. Actually, load in variables by invoking the alias. You must perform this operation for each terminal in which you use the IDF. If the installation went well, you'll see an output like this one when loading the ESP IDF environment. And now let's install it in the Windows OS. Download the online installer. Launch the installer. Apply fixes if needed. Launching an ESP IDF prompt, environment variables will be correctly loaded. No variable to compile and load into the ESP32 a simple firmware that makes blinking the two onboard LEDs. On both Windows and Linux platform, the steps are the same, so in this video we will use the Ubuntu OS. Firstly, let's create the project and write the code. I already wrote the code, so I copied it, but you have to write a simple main function and the blinker task like this one. As shown in the previous video, the communication between the host PC and one of the two microcontrollers via the USB C port is driven by the jumper JP1 near the USB C connector labeled as serial cell. By leaving it open, the serial communication is performed with the ESP32 microcontroller, while by closing it, the communication is performed with the RP2040. Once the board is connected and powered, you must put the ESP microcontroller in flash mode in order to program it. To do that, leave the jumper JP1 open, close the jumper near the UX connector, and reset the MCU with this button. Now it can be programmed. 
In a terminal with the ESPIDF environment already loaded, let's invoke this command using the IDF.py tool. After the build step, a build for the code build is created containing all the needed files. Now flash the boards. Keep in mind that the string slash dev slash tty usb 0 have to be replaced with the correct serial port, either for Linux and Windows. The firmware is now loaded in the microcontroller flash memory. Reset the board to see the LED start blinking. Since you are now able to load the firmware into the ESP32, you can create those projects that need to connect to an access point and leverage the internet connection or use the Bluetooth network, or maybe both of them. See you in the next video, guys!